Welcome to my journey to Stitch. I'm Sharon James, an IT geek, self-confessed Star Wars fan, and a little bit of a Disney addict. I work for a German software company, I spend most of my days behind a computer. But in my spare time, I'm a costumer and a fundraiser. I've been costuming since about 2014, and I make as many of my own costumes as possible. For my sins, I'm also the chairperson of the East Kent Crew Costume Club, who formed in 2015, and we're all shockingly enough from the East Kent area. If you want to look me up on social media, you can find me at Stitch Cosplay UK on Facebook and Twitter. Before I start on the epic journey of how I became Stitch, I need to say some thank yous. Firstly, to my best friend, fellow Disney fanatic and running buddy, Sam Cunningham. She assisted with Stitch's build and convinced me it was doable when I thought about giving up and because sometimes things are just too epic to do alone. Thank you very much, Sam. I also need to give a shout out to to Nathan, my husband, who patiently put up with a head on our dining room table for months, blue fluff all over the house, including his dinner, and who still doesn't complain that there's a pile of Stitch in the living room. So why Stitch? Well, he's a little bit of an outsider who doesn't really fit in, which means he's just like Lilo, and they form a bond. Which is cute. And he's fluffy. Who doesn't like fluffy things? He's naughty. He's unique. He means well. He likes coffee, just like me. He's a bit emotionally fragile. He's not really a monster. Um, Which makes him a little bit more human-like. And I just love him. There's everything about Stitch. He's awesome. So that's why I decided that I wanted to be Stitch. Plus, I've always wanted to make a mascot costume. And if you're going to make one, make your favourite character. So what materials do you need to make a stitch? Nothing too exotic. Most of the materials were fairly easy to get. eBay. eBay was my friend. I think 90% of stitch came from eBay. The total build was just shy of £160, which I didn't think was too bad for a great big mascot costume. The most expensive piece, as you can see from the slide, is the blue fur, which came in at 45 So all in all, pretty cheap, I think. Of course, there are no plans to make Stitch. There is no magic pattern. So I made it up as I went along. I used the two images from the Disney park as the main base for this, and a couple of animated images to catch his personality. I wanted to base my Stitch as close as possible on the Disney park mascot, but give a huge nod to the animated version, because after all, that's where he came from. I decided to split the build up into sections, four, to make it easy, feet, body, hands, and lastly his head, and to tackle each section as its own mini project. Obviously Stitch needed to be in proportion, so I took measurements from the park images and applied the proportions to my height of 5 foot 2 inches, or 157 centimetres for you metric types. There was a lot of suck it and see moments and trying to get things just right, and I had to change the plans a lot as I went along. It was slightly frustrating and I almost gave up twice, but the perseverance was worth it. So let's start with the build. Keep it simple, stupid. Let's do the feet first. The feet look like the easiest bit to do, so that's exactly where I started. Working from my proportionate plan, I made a foot template out of card. I think it was a pizza box. Um, And made sure that my shoe of choice, a croc, because let's be fair, you're going to be in this costume for a long time and you want some comfy shoes on. Crocs are my favourite. Um, would fit in the right place on the template. Once I was happy, I used the template to cut out a chunk of upholstery foam in the shape of the template and hollowed out enough room so I could stick my croc in. I did need to leave it to dry for at least 24 hours to make sure each one was stuck, and I did one on the Saturday and one on the Sunday and didn't touch them again until at least Monday. Once the shoes were firmly in place, I covered his feet in the lovely blue fur and made some very stylish ankle wraps to keep them in place. Another 48 hours of leaving them to dry. Um, The final touch was to add a rubber car mat on the soles of his feet to protect him so I can walk outside and I don't have to worry about getting soggy, wet, furry, foamy feet because, let's be fair, wet foam is heavy. It also helps me stay upright on slippery floors because foam and fur and a slippery polished floor isn't is an accident waiting to happen and I am the clumsiest person in the universe. So all in all, his feet were really simple and I managed to get them fixed in about five days I'd say, 
So that was a win. I was on a roll and I was convinced that I would be able to do this quickly. After the quick epic win of the feet, we moved on to Stitch's body. This is where Sam helped me. Stitch's body is basically a big fluffy blue onesie. After a small amount of searching, the best pattern we found was the 1731 jumpsuit pattern from Simplicity, and I managed to snag this one from Amazon when it was on sale. It was less than £6. Sam very nicely cut out all the pieces and sewed them up for me, because although I am always with the sewing machine, me and Blue Fluff were not friends. We left the back open to attach some Velcro, which was going to be used to fasten me into stitch. A strip of fur was attached to the inside of the front of the suit at about hip level for us to place three quarters of a hula hoop to give Stitch that lovely fat belly he has. And at the end of each of those straps, flaps, loops, whatever you want to call them, we attached some elastic so I could tie them behind me to make him look nice and round. His light blue patches were then cut out and sewed on the top of the already blue onesie. If you're working with fur, make sure you've got some really sharp scissors because otherwise you're going to not be able to cut a thing. And be prepared to get fur everywhere. You will be hoovering a lot and it may end up in your husband's dinner. Excellent, we were on a roll. Two bits down, two to go. Shortcut with the hands. The lovely people at Disney make stitch hands. They're available at Disney Parks in the US, Disneyland Paris, and some very select Disney stores. I've been to Florida and Paris since I decided to make Stitch and both times forgot to buy Stitch hands. Luckily I have some great friends in the US and they sent me a set. Of course they arrived and they were the wrong colour. They didn't match the fur that we were using so we knocked up some glove sleeves and left some gaps to poke his claws through. Hey presto, really quick Stitch hands. They looked amazing. The only downside is they're quite cumbersome to put on, especially once you've got one hand on, because you do not have fingers to put the other glove on, so you need help. Um, and it also gets very hot as they're two layers of fur. They do look amazing when they're on though, so it was worth it. So great, three bits down, just the head to go. What could possibly go wrong? The head was by far the most complicated bit and I came up with a crazy idea to base it on a hat so it would sit on my head properly. A lightweight construction helmet seemed the best fit. The first phase was to build the base. This involved a lot of cardboard, and I mean a lot of cardboard. We constructed a ball-like structure around the hat, leaving a gap just below the peak, as this is where Stitch's nose was going to be, and this was gonna be my limited amount of vision. His mouth is two semicircles of a pizza box stuck in a Pac-Man-esque shape, so his mouth looks slightly open. And as Stitch's head is larger at the front, which provided to be a little bit of a challenge because it was front heavy, we used a lump of modelling clay at the back to counterbalance the extra weight. If I hadn't have done that, I would be continually looking at my feet, and although Stitch's feet are great, I wouldn't want to look at them all day. Once the basic shape was made, the whole thing was covered in chicken wire, where a lot of swearing had occurred because I stabbed myself in the hands a lot. Um, I would suggest buying some very good quality wire cutters, which I did do after I'd maimed myself a bit. And it was an issue attaching it. But once it was done, I had the basic shape of the head, which allowed me to then move on to phase two. Phase one of the head construction probably took about six weeks. It was very annoying and at this point I almost gave up. Phase two of Operation Head involved covering the whole of the ball layer. Three layers of newspaper mache went on first, all over the ball, leaving the nose hole free. Once that was dry, a further two layers of brown packing paper mache was put on top. The brown packing paper I found was much more robust and gave the shell a thicker feel the paper mache phase took approximately two weeks to do, as I did a layer every day, leaving it at least one or two days in between each layer. Once that was done, I attached his ears, which are made from yoga mat foam, 
and they are attached with gaffer tape and then reinforced with PVA glue and more brown paper. Stitch's nose is a clear plastic bowl. Again, that was gaffer taped on and then reinforced with PVA glue and brown packing paper. Once everything was dry, the inside of his mouth was spray painted black and then given a layer of black acrylic paint to make it look quite bright. It was then left for quite some time to dry and I'd completely lost my mojo. The whole idea of finishing stitch had gone. Um, I, I was ready to give up. It wasn't until Sam and I went to Disneyland Paris to participate in a run Disney race to raise money for Field of Force Day that I decided I wasn't going to give up. When we arrived home, there was a week until the Field of Force Day event and I was determined to have Stitched finished so I could take him. That gave me the extra push I needed. There was no stopping me after that. So on arriving back from our run, I hit the ground running, so to speak, excuse the pun, with the fur covering, which was by far the messiest thing that I had ever attempted. Upholstery spray glue, which is what I used to stick the fur onto his head shell, is the most amazingly tacky thing. And because my fur was shedding, I actually had blue hands and looked like the beast from the X-Men for about a week. Stitch's nose was covered in a blue microfiber cloth to give his nose that blue look. And the rest of his head was covered in strips of the dark blue fur attached with the upholstery spray glue. Light blue fur was then used for his bottom jaw and the front of the neck. The head phase three was just the finishing touches after that. More yoga mat foam was used for his eyes and his teeth. They were cut to shape, spray painted, touched up with acrylic paint and then glued to his head. To allow me to be able to see something, which to be honest, I could see absolutely nothing in there without it, I purchased a small bargain of a camera from eBay and that's Velcroed inside his nose. It runs off a USB battery pack to give me continuous vision. I use vision very loosely as it's a one and a half by two inch square screen, which is not very large by any stretch of the imagination. Visibility isn't good on any to spot or in a minder at all times, but at least with the camera, I can see people. I can see where I'm going, and sometimes I don't get stuck indoors. So, put it all together, and what do you get? You get Stitch. As you can see, he's looking pretty good, and he's been extremely popular at all the events we've taken him to. On his first outing at Phil the Force Day, he went down at an absolute storm. And I didn't have the camera in him at that point, so I have a whole new respect for anybody that is visually impaired, because I could see nothing. We're working on further tweaks and upgrades, and at some point I would love to rebuild his head, just so I can have vision improvements. But all in all, I am so happy at how he turned out, and I'm really glad that I didn't give up with him. So what do I do with him now I have a stitch? Generally, we go out and have lots of fun with the costume club. The kids and adults love Stitch and he always goes down an absolute storm whenever we take him anywhere. We also raise a lot of money for charity and help to raise awareness for some great causes. And our favourite is Phil the Force Day, run by the First Century Legion. They run events for people with all types of disabilities and Phil the Force Day are the only film and TV convention exclusively designed for disabled attendees. It's an amazing cause and one of the reasons that I made Stitch, and everyone that is part of our costume club is a massive supporter. You can find out more about them from their website, fillthefourstay.com, or search for Fill the Force Day on Facebook. Which leads me on nicely to this little bit of fundraising. Again, Sam and I, and possibly a team, are running to raise funds for Fill the Force Day at the Disneyland Paris Marathon Weekend. You can find out more or how to donate by heading to the link below. Thanks for sharing this journey with me on how I became Stitch. And please contact me if you have any questions, want to know more about the Costume Club, Feel the Force Day or our Disney run. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>